where in order to prove this, the existence of a strongest set satisfying everywhere f is an essential part of uh, the theorem. With another f, you cannot prove this. So another way of looking at this is that um, it is a way of exploiting the fact that this viewed as equation in Z has a strongest solution. Um, similarly, uh, now you can also rewrite it as for all Z such that the X implies Z the F of Z. This rewriting is indicated if X has such a shape that you can nicely manipulate the formulae if you, with X in the uh, antecedent but not in the consequent. Now, uh, obviously these two rules are extremely general um, and I do not have the time to demonstrate them but believe me. Uh, if you apply them, then the, the existence of a strongest solution for this, that of course smells of the Galois connection and the whole apparatus uh, um, tells you what to do. Sorry that I cannot go into details. Questions? Remarks? Objections? Yes. The title of your talk is not to any of the content. Um, things I have learned and write. Yes, the kind of. The kind, the kind of things I've learned and yeah. write. I just wondered whether, having chosen that title, you gave any thought at all to any of the following. Interrupts, semaphores, multi-programming, levels of abstraction, <laughs> etc. Yes, I did and I decided not to mention them. <laughs> would you like to explain? Uh, had you been given more time, would you? To talk on just that side. Oh. I might have told that uh, my reason for introducing semaphores was because I wanted to move the arguing uh, and showing the correctness of uh, operating systems um, to be able to do that in discrete reasoning without any analog <coughs> arguments. I would have told that I, for years and years I assumed that that was precisely the same reason why Morris Wilkes uh, introduced microprogrammed machines that did not turn out to be true. Uh, more as well, choice, he told me, was purely inspired by economic mechanical considerations. Uh, I would also tell that for the first five or six years that I taught this material, uh, I had the gravest difficulties in convincing my audience that it was a worthwhile exercise to try to uh, argue about uh, the cooperation of such processes without taking their relative speed in, uh, velocity speed into account. Speed, you see, yes. Each time the uh, public protested. Because I knew the speech ratios, didn't I? And, and, and not, not using that, ignoring that, I, I threw away valuable knowledge. I've had a hard time convincing people that uh, since the only thing you can do with knowledge 
is use it in the argument, the only thing the knowledge can do is to, to complicate your argument, because you have to use it. <laughs> uh, nowadays, uh, well, we can argue two ways. Either we can say but that uh, co communicating and cooperating processes with roughly undefined speed ratios uh, is a familiar abstraction and are therefore people don't protest anymore. Uh, I, but I think that the, the, the explanation is a little bit more encouraging. And that uh, people don't protest uh, because they are more aware of the fact that uh, we have to abstract. I hope so, at least. And, uh, so that will run with.